thought on that on a twins related note, but we do want to thank uh, Tony Hoagland. You can find him at champlininsurance.com. Champlin, that is the town. And uh, you can also call him at 763-421-4900, 763-421-4900. Hi, Talk North listeners. I wanted to let you all know about State Farm's new Quotes for Good program. We partner with local nonprofits to raise money for great causes. For the Roy Smalley Show, I will be donating $10 to pitch in for baseball and softball. This provides baseball and softball equipment for kids in need. Be sure to mention the show when you reach out to us so that we can track the donations. You can reach us at 763-421-4900 or check out our website at champlininsurance.com. And I know maybe we pound on this drum too often, but I just want to kind of relate it to Twins hitters, Twins history. Uh, you know, the, the narrative, the David Ortiz narrative that became popular was that the Twins wanted him to slap the ball the other way. That wasn't true. It sounded, you know, sounded good because it's a, so much more successful with the Red Sox than he did with the Twins. Uh, but he was also healthier. He was also bigger and stronger. And he also hit a million balls to left center when he was in, in Fenway Park. And that was why he's such a dangerous hitter. Kent Herbeck, Justin Morneau, what you saw from those guys in their primes was they would drive the ball to left center. They'd drive the ball the other way until – just what you said until people started pounding them inside as a reaction. And then they hit one nine miles to right field. And then they, but they, they were the cat in the cat and mouse. They, you know, they weren't trying to hit singles through the hole. They were trying to drive the ball. That's what you see at Soto. And that's, that's what I find so fascinating about Sano last year in, in like two thirds of a season, he hit 34 home runs and he hit a lot of really, and he hit some, you know, 96 mile an hour fastballs and he hit a million home runs to left field. But, if he is willing to take the ball and drive it out of the ballpark to center and right or hit it off the wall to center and right, then his batting average is going to go up. He's going to be harder to pitch to. He's going to draw more walks, and he's still going to hit all those home runs, maybe even more. He'll hit more. He would hit more home runs if he would set up to hit. If he would look uh, middle of the plate, look for fastballs from the middle of the plate uh, to the outside part of the plate and set up to hit those, uh, out of the ballpark to right or off the wall to right center or to center field, then what happens is the only pitch he's vulnerable uh, on is uh, the inside fastball. Everything else he's on. That you, you'll, you won't see him swing at sliders in the dirt. If he's, set up, if he's really set up uh, to hit the ball to right center, you won't see him swing at sliders in the dirt. You also won't see him uh, take a cookie slider in the middle of the plate because he is so much on fastball speed. He'll be on fastball speed back over the plate to right center, and the slider the slider will go on the third deck and left field. You know the slider strike. He'll hit. He'd hit for a higher average, and he'd strike out less, and he'd hit more home runs, not not fewer. Um, his swing is not set up to do that, uh, and he's working at shortening the length between that the big end of the bat travels. Uh, from the time he starts into from his launch position to the you know contact point, um, he's got a look. If he were to do as we're suggesting, the the swing would have to change. Uh, you know, take the next step uh, as well. And I don't know that that's ever gonna that's ever gonna happen. His swing is shorter, but it's still it's still longer than it, than it, it it needs to be if he's going to be a Soto type hitter or a Cabrera type hitter, uh, he has that talent and that strength. There's no, there's no question, but the other, the other piece of that, uh, the other two other pieces that Cabrera and Soto have that, that, uh, Miguel has yet to demonstrate that he has is a, the ability or the willingness or both to, to shorten his swing a bit to, and, uh, then, uh, so that he doesn't worry so much about getting to upper velocity fastballs from the middle of the plate in, because that's that's what he worries about right now. He wants to he wants to get the ball a fastball from the middle of the plate in, and he wants to hit a home run to left field. And his swing is a little bit long, and he'll get he'll get beat on some of those, and that that speeds him up. It does the it has the opposite effect on a hitter. It, you know, it speeds you up. And and then you get even longer, and you start, and you and you're vulnerable to a lot more uh, pitches. And so what we haven't seen from him yet is the ability or the willingness, the understanding that he's he's got to get a little bit shorter 
uh, so he can get to those fastballs. But then this, the other thing that Soto and Cabrera have is, is the understanding that uh, the opposite field gap plays when you're that strong and that good, and it sets you up for a lot more success. He doesn't understand yet that he'll hit more home runs hitting that way and not fewer. He he doesn't he he's not wired that way yet. And I I think that you know just what he demonstrated, you know, 34 pitches are going to show up during the course of a, of a season that are going to going to show up to him regardless of what I'm saying here whether I'd like to see a swing short or I'd like to see him do different things. If he doesn't change anything, 34 pitches are going to show up during the course of the year that go out of the ballpark. Can't help it. He's too big and strong and talented. So that that will happen. Uh, the question is, 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 and maybe the, that may turn out to be good enough, right? And I don't know that he'll ever, for, for that reason, I don't know that he'll ever be a fourth hitter or maybe even a fifth hitter. Pretty pretty damaging sixth place hitter, you know, if a guy's going to hit, you know, 30 to 35 home runs. But there's just a lot of runs, uh, RBIs out there that he's not going to get because of because of the strikeouts and 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 uh, all that. But it's still pretty good, and that may be that may be the, what we're going to get from Sano his whole career, and that that might turn out to be absolutely fine. He had a huge season for playing two thirds of it, and you know I I I for one would not be totally totally unhappy with seeing him do that every year on a, on that kind of per game, uh, you know, per season basis. I just look at it at, at the talent and the strength and say, you know, man, what that could be, you know, relative to guys like Soto and Cabrera and some of these other guys who have, who have learned that. And they've got nothing on Miguel Sano in terms of talent and strength. And I want to make one more point about uh, Sano and, and you know, talk about the long swing. Do, we do want to thank Bite Squad, BiteSquad.com. Promo code is TalkNorth. Uh, but go to BiteSquad.com. That you might have an even better deal in your area, home, office, wherever you happen to be, morning, noon, night, BiteSquad.com. Promo code is TalkNorth. But try it. Try uh, keep try the website. Also, upload the Bite Squad app and upload your information to it. It makes ordering really easy right off your phone anytime you want. So the only great hitter I can think of who successfully made his swing shorter and thrived was Paul Molitor toward the end of his career. He went to the absolute still, uh, you know, if you go back and look at video of him when he was a young brewer, the feet, both feet were moving, the bat was waggling. He looked like, you know, he was hyperactive. And then by the, by the time he became a twin and at 341 at like the age of 40, he was dead still and I mean, the bat, it was one of the shortest swings I've ever seen. And, and you know, I was, I was about to explain it. Why don't I let the, the expert explain to us what a short swing is? Because I don't think everybody really understands that. And then tell me how hard it is to shorten your swing during the middle of a major league career. Sure. Um, so if you think about, if you think about hitting, you, you hit with, um, with about, I don't know, seven or eight inches, six, seven, eight inches uh, uh, of the big end of the bat, right? Not the end and not the label, but there's, you know, there's six or seven or eight inches that uh, that are the sweet spot that uh, that is the sweet spot that that uh, that you hit with. So uh, that you want to hit with. So the idea is, once you recognize a pitch and, and decide uh, to swing, how directly to the ball, how quickly, and therefore that means how directly and efficiently can you move your hands have your hands move the big end of the bat to the point of contact in the in the strike zone if you imagine if we can use if we we can use to know and people have this in people's minds if you if you think of his swing he stands kind of upright and his hands are kind of up by his right right shoulder his back shoulder and as he strides into the ball his hands go back the way they're supposed to. And that's when they get to the very back as your foot's landing, your front foot's landing, your hands are, 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 are back at the back of where your swing's going to start. And that's the launch position. And that's what you should be. Now from there is, is the moment of truth from that launch position. When your hands are back and your front foot is down, does the bit, when you swing at the, at the ball, 
Do you swing at it so that the big end drops down and around and comes, uh, and comes lagging behind your hands? Or do you have the ability to have the big end of the bat come more directly with your hand movement? If you think about, you know, people talk about hand-eye coordination in baseball. You have to have good hand-eye coordination. Hand-eye coordination only is really true in catching a ball, right? Because the glove's right on your hand, and, the, and you have to watch the ball into your hand that's got a glove on it. In hitting, yes, you have to have hand-eye coordination, but it's a funny kind of hand-eye coordination because your hands are, need to move something that's two feet away from them to the ball that's that's moving toward you. And so that relationship between your hands and the big end of the bat has got to be really efficient in, in terms of moving the big end uh, to the ball. And if there's a loop at all, it it, it you don't you can't get to uh, big league fastballs and and uh, in a lot of cases. And so that's that's basically what what we're we're talking about and uh contrasting that with with paul in the example that you're using paul waited a long he 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 made his swing efficient from uh i i can move the big end of the bat exactly with my hands so that i can make contact with uh, you know you can't throw it too hard and and um you know that's I guess that's that's basically what we're talking about. The 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 length of the swing, a long swing, s- starts from the launch launch position, and the hands get ahead of the big too far ahead of the big end of the bat. The big end loops down, and if you can picture that happening, the the bat looping down below your hands, it costs you two or three feet. I mean, it, it just it, it, in terms of uh, the ball traveling and and. Uh, so that's 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 basically the long swing. The short swing is is one where uh, hands come closer to the body uh, inside the line of flight of the ball, and the big end of the bat comes more uh, directly down the line of flight of the ball. It's more. It stays in the strike zone. The big end stays in the strike zone longer. It's not in you know, looping long swing. Imagine you're kind of in and out. You're coming from kind of underneath a little bit, and you're and you're into the into the line of flight of the ball, and then you're and then you're out of it, and the timing has to be absolutely perfect. When you're when the big end of the bat is coming more with your hands and more directly down the line of flight of the of the of the ball, the big end stays in the in the zone longer, uh, which is a kind of funny way of saying your your bat is quicker when it stays in the in, in the in the line of flight of the ball uh, longer. Now, the this phrase I always heard from hitting coaches, short to long through. In other words, you want to get the hitting area of the bat to the hitting zone as quickly, as directly as possible. And then you then that's when the, I think some people think level means level all the way through. You, it doesn't do you any good to have a level swing back by your right hip. You want the bat to be level after you get to the hitting zone. And that, that allows you to hit pitches uh, that stay on that plane. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 the 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 bat will always be below the hands a little bit as it's coming through. I mean, if you right. try, it, it, there's no way that you can swing a bat without that without that happening. So the question is, how far, how much of a lag, how much lag time do you have? And that's it, it's a very small, uh, very small amount. I mean, it's very very small movement with your with with getting the big end of the bat to come more directly with your hands. But it's still it's still going to be below. Uh, your hands a little bit. It's it, uh, it's just uh, it, it's, unless you're a really good high ball hitter, in which case it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. But for most everybody, uh, that's the way it is. And if you think about is it directly to the ball, to use your 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 term there, think about uh, Mitch Garver. What what mm-hmm. Mitch Garver did with his swing, right? So he's he's about as direct to the ball as as you can get. Luis Arise is uh, is direct. Uh, to the ball with his uh, uh, Eddie Rosario has they say he has great hands what what does that mean what that means is the big end of the bat's coming with his hands is the big end of the bat's not lagging in it with for for Eddie what gets Eddie in trouble is he gets real he gets a little bigger with his body he opens up and he swing and you know he swings 
you know, he lengthens out his swing, not because that's his natural swing, but because of where he is mentally and what he's trying to do uh, with, uh, with the ball.